Hi there, folks. My name is Mike, and welcome to another lesson in SDL2. This lesson, we're going to be talking about sprite animation. It's an exciting one, and I think it'll take your multimedia applications and games to the next level. It's something that you need to do, right? Animate sprites. But to understand the concept, I want to take you back a little bit to something that you might be familiar with. So go ahead and take a moment to Google Flipbook. Perhaps you've seen one of these as a child's toy or just perhaps in a book that you enjoy reading or a cool card. But the idea is you can have many different pages and flip through them and play one frame at a time. And if you play that series of frames over and over again, that'll give you an animation. In fact, that's how motion pictures today are developed. So we want to be able to practice the same idea. So what I've gone ahead and done is prepared for today's lesson a sprite sheet like this one for us to use. Now, I want to give credit to the particular author. I typed in free sprite sheet here and found one here. And you can go ahead and see if you click on the sheet, and we'll go ahead and look at it at GIMP, that there are different types of animation sequences depending on the frame that you play. So that is our goal is going to be to select one of these particular frames here, and I'll just call this frame zero and play it at a given time. So just one tiny portion of this image. And likewise, then we'll select the next frame and the next frame and the next frame. Now, you notice I've been a little bit imprecise in how I've been selecting these frames. So we're going to have to fix that up a little bit here and think about what the challenge is. So in fact, what I've done to make things a little bit easier, because I don't know from this artist how big the frames are, is I've edited this image here. And what that's required, go ahead and load up this image here, is that I just space out each of the frames in a uniform manner. Now I might want to fill up the rest of this image with more useful frames in my animation, but don't worry about that for now. But in case you're struggling with this problem, one thing that you can do is open up a program like GIMP, go ahead and create a new layer. I'm just going to call it Grid, go to Filters, Render, Pattern, choose a grid pattern, and roughly speaking, you can figure out the pixel size here. So I know this is about 170 by 110. I'm going to go ahead and make the color black so that it stands out a little bit. And I'll hit uh, OK here. And uh, oops, let me go ahead and just make this a little bit bigger. Sorry, that's not uh, 170. Um, it's actually a little bit uh, bigger than that. So let me go ahead and uh, reset the tiles there. And this is part of the process here. In fact, let me do this with a little bit more discipline here and zoom in here on the actual sprite sheet and use my selection tool here, grab from the corner, and I'm paying attention to the bottom left corner uh, in GIMP, which you probably can't see, uh, but the size here. So I can see that these are, in fact, about 170 or so by about 110 this selection here, because that's the exact thing that we're going to want to do as part of our sprite animation. So let me try to recreate this grid again, because I think it's neat to see the boundaries. So I'll delete this layer. I'll go ahead to filters. Um, I will do render, pattern, and grid. And let's make sure that this is 170 by 110. The line width, I just want to be one by one. And let me make sure that these scale appropriately. I'll hit OK. And I don't want these to scale exactly in size. Uh, that's what this little uh, anchor does. So you have to be a little bit careful there. So I'll hit OK here. And again, if I go ahead and let's go ahead and uh, close my tools here and zoom out a bit. And we can see that each of the ogres now occupies its own space, which is much better. So again, that's our goal. I've provided this image for you, as well as the original image with credits to the uh, authors, as you could see in the previous uh, link here on Google, just so that we can get a simple walking animation. OK, so with that said, let's go ahead and talk about some code. So just as a recap, if you haven't seen the previous lessons, I've got a file structure now that looks something like this. So I can go ahead and look in tree or download the sample files and just go ahead and look through the directory here. But I've got some includes here and a source directory. Now what you'll notice is what I've implemented here is an animated sprite uh, HPP. So this is going to be a new class. 
Now I could have done something where I perhaps inherited from texture and use that as a base class, but again, I tend to try to avoid inheritance, at least for now, because we don't need that additional complexity. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in and look at the code and see what problem we're solved. So I'm gonna go ahead in Vim here and open up in the include directory, the animated sprite. Usually when I'm implementing something, I wanna think about what the interface is itself. And then I can worry about some of the implementation details. And in some ways I've taken care of this, but you might be inspired from other gaming toolkits or multimedia toolkits that do animation. So, you know, feel free to change this as you like. But what I have here is a draw function, which is just gonna tell us the position at which we are drawing a rectangle and how big it is. And then I have play frame. And this is the source X position, Y position, and the width and the height of our rectangle. So again, just to demonstrate this as clear as possible, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, open up GIMP here. Let me go ahead and uh, cancel that. And again, that's uh, where I'm drawing essentially the X position. Let me just select one of these other frames here is this top corner here. That's the X and the Y. And then this is the uh, W here for the width and appropriately the height of each of these cells. And again, this is frame zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Okay, so that's the idea with selecting and sort of just masking off the rest of this sprite sheet and just selecting one small sprite. Okay, so back to the code here so we can take a look. And I'm actually gonna refactor this a little bit because we had M rectangle before where we're rendering and I'm gonna name that M destination because that's a little bit more clear and consistent with the SDL API. Okay, more on that in just one moment. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and look at our implementation of animated sprite. So what I've got here is where we are drawing and I need to make my update here for M destination M rectangle and becomes M destination. And that cleans up our code a little bit. And here's where we play our frame. So again, the X is selecting where in the sprite sheet that we are actually drawing from. That's according to this diagram. Here. The W is width of that individual frame within our sprite sheet and so on. And then I'm multiplying the width times the frame because that's what's gonna allow me to traverse or select each of these particular frames here. That's essentially the offset. Now, you might have more complicated animations that don't all fit in a row and um, extend uh, downwards in this direction, which I'll talk about a little bit at the end, how you might solve that problem. But for now, this is um, our scheme. Okay, and then finally we have the width and the height here. And then once we have uh, each of these set up here, and I need to do one more update here, we can figure out how to actually render this animated sprite into our screen. So the idea is we're going to use render copy to select for a particular texture, that's this whole entire uh, sprite sheet above me, a particular source, and then the destination or the rectangle, which we're gonna stretch and fix what, um, and fit rather one of these frames to. So just to give you a quick reminder on SDL render copy, so you can see it in the documentation, this is again, how we're going to copy some portion, the keyword here, Previously, we had been passing in null for the source, which just passes in the whole thing uh, or the whole texture and into our render at a specific size here. And now, again, we just want a tiny, tiny portion of that uh, to be copied uh, from our source into our destination. Okay, so now how do we get this thing animated? Well, let's go ahead and open up the main file here, which is in source and main. And I've cleaned this up a little bit and I'm not really doing anything with our textured rectangle at this moment. I just wanna show one animated sprite, but I've got our code here and I've cheated a little bit just to make this simple, but I want some counter to choose what frame we're on. So we're gonna start with frame number zero the first time that this runs. And I'll go ahead and play the frame again, starting from the uh, X and Y position. That's where I'm selecting from. That's on this image here and the width and the height and our offset. 
And then I'll call the render function, which does the render copy to our render that draws everything, and increment our frame number. Now, if it's greater than six, because we don't have more than six frames here, then we want to reset our frame counter. And that's how we'll get in animation. So with that said, let's go ahead and try this out and see if it works. I'm going to use our build script. And again, just to uh, review what that is, I'm just building on Linux. So you can see the commands here and check out some videos on doing this in Windows or Mac in a previous uh, lesson, if you like. But let's just go ahead and build here. And then I'll go ahead and uh, run the program that was generated in my bin directory. And we'll see something like this, our ogre running one frame at a time here. Now, it might not be as smooth as we like because we would need perhaps more frames, perhaps as many as 24 if we really wanted a fluid motion. But something like this is fine or we'll do the trick. And in fact, there's something new that I've introduced um, into this code here, which is the SDL delay. And this is how many milliseconds I want to slow down our program. So let me go ahead and recompile and rerun this just so you can see every frame running one frame at a time. So here it is. And you can see the motion has slowed down. So we'll talk about frame independent movement and locking frame rates at 30 or 60 frames per second in future lessons. Uh, but for now, you can use SDL delay just to demonstrate this concept and see it working. All right. So I think we get the idea of how to do uh, animations here. And I'll go ahead and put it at something reasonable, like maybe 100 here, uh, and rebuild here. But what about more complex animations? How might I want to handle this? Well, the reality is you often want to work with some sort of artist and the content or the asset pipeline. So what that might mean is coming up with a format, maybe in text that the artists or perhaps uh, you edit, depending on your team structure, that specifies what the sprite is, uh, or perhaps the image file, and the animations that are found. So for example, maybe we have an idle animation, maybe a walk one, and then specifying you know, where those uh, particular uh, portions of the sprite that we should select. So you can have some format like this so that you could control or have more complicated animations that span multiple frames, or perhaps for different parts of the sprites. That's something that you'll have to think about and it's a little bit advanced, but once you get the basics uh, up and running, you can build something like this to create some cool animations in your tool. So with that said, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson with our friend here, who's now walking with us. And if you'd like to continue on in future lessons or tutorials or enjoying this channel, please go ahead, like, subscribe, share with your friends, and I hope you're learning a lot. Thanks for spending your time with me, and we'll see you in a future lesson.